offensive line. So, yeah, Addison Holmes, he may not come off the bus and scare you, but this guy, through his intellect, has big time ability, and he has a chance right now to be the starter at center. What a story here. Zach Klein back at the controls for the Cal offense. Hits Jordan Duncan, a freshman receiver, on the slant with a penalty marker down. And Duncan shaking up. Early enrollee with great hands. Let's check the penalty first, and then we can get into Duncan and Klein. interference let's start with Klein once a four-star all-american signee for Jeff Tedford how is he back in Berkeley <laughs> it's unbelievable um, we want to talk about humility I mean you look at just his path it's been extremely unique you know comes here and he's part of that it was that hashtag Cal gang it was a huge class under Tedford they lost some guys late that I know frustrated some Cal fans but he transfers thinks he might be going to Oregon State ends up at Butte Community College then from there goes to Indiana State competes for the starting job final day at training camp they say that you're not going to be the starter stays there as it gets a little chippy down on the field a little bit is but but just a dynamic story ash i know you've been all over it bug rivera on the catch there spun down a couple of times and this is going to be another one of those uh, rule review sequences for the pac-12 and now let's check in with Ashley. Yeah, JB, I, I talked to Zach at practice the other day, and I said, if you could use one word to describe your college football journey, what would it be? It took him a little while, like almost 30 minutes. He said, let me get back to you. I want to pick the right word. And when he finally came back, he ran right up to me and said, okay, I got it. Word that describes my college football experience, Odyssean. Odyssean, of course, guys, the adjective form of Odyssey, defined as a long series of wanderings or adventures, especially when filled with notable experiences and hardships. So pretty spot on, spoken like a true English major, which he is, and proof right there, gentlemen, you get smarter by hanging out at Cal football practice. Yeah, Ash says, of course, as she explains that to us, like you and I have any idea what <laughs> she's talking clue. about. But uh, since we're talking ac academics, I do want to point out the academic progress that this Cal program has made. It's a big issue. It was in the news quite a bit in recent years. It's going to come out again on Wednesday, and the Golden Bears have made tremendous progress. We got some advance notice that their score is going to be 997. Uh, Sonny Dyke says it's a credit to a lot of people. It's something he remembers even from his interview with Sandy Barber when he took this job. Uh, and he gives a lot of the credit to the resources here at Cal, the learning specialists that have invested in these young men. Patrick Worstel in great position, makes the catch. AJ, great house in coverage, and there may have been PI again. This is a beautiful job of wide receiver Patrick Warstow. He's going to slow down, bump into the DB, create a little bit of a contact, and that's going to allow the flag to be thrown and also allowing him to maintain his catch radius on the outside. That's, I'm sure, firing up Curtis Conway in the studio at the Pac-12 Networks. That is clinic-worthy tape of how you catch a deep ball in man-to-man -man coverage. Yeah, appropriate since we're talking about Zach Klein too because Warstel has been longtime childhood friends with Zach. He's part of the reason that he's back here at Cal. They go to the ground. Billy McCrary the third. He's had a couple of good carries. I want to finish that APR thought real quick. One, one more comment from Sonny Dykes. Says despite all the resources and the help that they get, it's about the student athletes, right? And in his three and going on four years now, the conversation has gone from, wow, coach, this is tough speaking to the academic riggers, to wow, coach, what an amazing opportunity I have off the field in the classroom. So congratulations to the student athletes, and the Cal Golden Bears. And you see the progress they have made. Well, it's a dynamic jump, you know, and we were here, everybody on the Pac-12 Network saw the drive, year one of Sonny Dykes, one and 11, troubles off the field, on the field, but really just trying to get his philosophy in place academically, athletically, and recruiting, administratively, and you can see the success he's had. And when you look at his career, as we watch another dynamic player, no the youngster. But you look at Sonny's career, right? Go back to La Tech, five and seven his first year, eight and five his second year, nine and three his third year. You look at this place when he got to Cal, one and 11 to five and seven to eight and five last year. So this guy knows how to build programs, knows what it takes, understands the character you need. And 
we got a chance to talk about eight players yesterday, and they all just speak with a reverence about the program and a respect to the academic side that I think can show clearly what you just showed in the APR as a reflection. Fine still in there, quarterback. He's got Patrick Laird as his tailback. Bounces in the pocket. Now flushed. Extending the play, and that one trailing smoke out of bounds. All right, Yogi, how do you prevent it, though, from being two steps forward, one step back? Because ESPN.com says these Cal Bears have a top five strength of schedule in the country. Oh, no doubt. I mean, when you look at them this year, I think it's kind of comparable to last year. You know, they're having the opportunity to get rolling off the bat in the conference. I mean, they're going to Hawaii early on, San Diego State, Texas, ASU. Those are, you know, they could start off 4-0. and You know, they'll probably be predicted to win all of those games, and then we'll just kind of see what happens from there. So it's really going to be about the finish with this program, and that's the development. It's also the truth of the Pac-12 Conference. You know, it's such depth week in and week out. It's a possession here, a possession there. That's why whoever ends up being named the starter at the quarterback position is going to be critical. There's Jared Goff in attendance. It's going to be challenging. Eight of the top 19 schedules in the country, according to ESPN, in the Pac-12. It's because we play nine, and we play power five opponents out of league. No doubt. And, you know, I actually talked to Sonny in the open about when are you going to choose a quarterback? How come we're not maybe possibly seeing a starter named after today? Well, we asked him to think back to Jared Goff, and he said, look, if it was after his first spring, I probably wouldn't have named him the starter if I was pressured to name a guy. He might have named Zach Klein the starter, but he said the growth in the offseason from Jared convinced him to allow these guys to continue to compete for this job, which is going to happen this offseason in the training camp as well, because there's a lot of time for Ross Powell, Ross Bowers, Chase Forrest, Zach Klein, and even Max Gillum, who can make a push and really take the next steps that are necessary to be the quarterback in this offense. Never been any doubt about the ball skill of Zach Klein. With his arm, it comes out <laughs> with velocity. They're going to run it right in with Patrick Laird. He reportedly had a really impressive scrimmage earlier this spring, backing it up again in front of the cameras in the crowd today. <laughs> again, the run pass option is hard. You know, we talked to Hardy Nickerson, middle linebacker, about it, playing backer, and all of a sudden it's coming at you, and you got to decide, uh, do I need to drop? Are they going to throw it behind me as a linebacker? Do I need to fill this hole because it's a run play? And it puts a lot of stress on a defense, specifically the front seven and the backer position. Everybody going for two today, and Laird hits pay dirt again on the conversion. The red shirt sophomore from San Luis Obispo, California, went to Mission Prep High School. He's got the blue team in front by a score, the 2016 Cal Spring football scrimmage. too high enough to kind of get his feet wet, get his mind thinking defense and safety again. He thinks that offseason, like you said, is going to be critical if he's going to make that jump into the top of the 2D. Well, and now think about it, it's safety. I mean, it, you now understand truly how quarterbacks work again. It wasn't just your freshman year. We had a little bit of a package in the run game. More of a mature player this spring, seeing it from the offense perspective, now jumping back to defense, I think that's big advantage for the secondary. Klein at the controls of the blue team offense. From a deep drop, he's at time to find Brandon Singleton, whose father Nate played wide receiver for the Niners and the Ravens. Check out the pass protection here by Patrick Laird. This is impressive. And you'll see him, right? He's on the left of your screen. We'll, we'll get back to that. But uh, uh, an impressive job by him. Just understanding where pressure's coming from. That's a responsibility that their new running back coach is putting on him. So we're going to see more six- and seven-man protection schemes from the Cal offense? Yeah, it's a great point. You know, last year in this offense, a lot of five-man protection, pretty predominantly five-man protection. I mean, that's just the offensive line, and if there's a free rusher, it was on Jared Goff to get the ball out or set the protection towards that rusher, move the offensive line. Now this year, there's going to be a running back. There'll be a fullback at times. There'll be a tight end at times in the backfield. So six, seven-man protections, as well as, as we referenced earlier, this offensive line is now kick sliding versus quick pass setting. That's going to give whoever the quarterback is a little bit more time. It's also going to give them a couple more tools in their toolbox to check when exotic, dynamic pressures are coming their way. 
final walk-on, remember, he intended to finish his Cal degree before even asking Sonny Dykes if he could have the opportunity to return to the football team. That's a completion of Jack Austin, who has moved inside this spring. He, too, will turn 21 in a couple of weeks, Redshirt Junior, Chino Hills, California. Uh, Zach Klein, according to uh, Ryan Gorsey, who does a great job covering this team, says that Klein is living with his sister Allie and her husband in San Ramon as he continues his education and Cal football career. There is Melky Stovall. Turns it right up the hash marks into the end zone. The four-star early enrollee, an Army All-American, Melky Stovall. You know what I love about number eight right there? I don't know Zach since he was 16. You know, he's a huge recruit. He was offered as a sophomore in high school by Coach Jeff Tedford, you know, here in the Northern California area. And it's his passion now for the game. You know, sometimes when the game gets taken away from you or things don't go your way, we covered this team when he lost the job to Jared Goff. And he was down. He was beat down. It would happen to anybody. He dreamt of playing here. Obviously transferred. Has gone through dramatic highs and lows, right? I think he's going to Oregon State. All of a sudden, Luke Del Rio, who's now the starter at Florida, is there. That doesn't happen. Goes to Butte Community College, just like Aaron Rodgers, a guy that I'm sure people have heard about. And then, of course, goes to Indiana State. So comes back, and he could have acted like, you know, I'm going to be a little sourpuss. I got kicked a little bit while I was down. But he hasn't. And that love for the game, to me, is going to be infectious for this team. And not sure if he's going to be the starter or going to get any reps once the season starts, but that energy in the quarterback room, which will be a young quarterback, that energy within the team, to me, that's going to be exciting. He got into it with Chibuzo Wakocha in the end zone there. It looks like maybe Hunter Abel on the ground there as well. About competitive fire, he's still got it. And you mentioned his connection to Aaron Rodgers. Can't help but notice that he was originally assigned Rogers old number eight, wearing it again here in silver for the spring game. And they're gonna take us to halftime. So the blue and the gold teams have had half of their drives, 28-20 the score, and Ashley is with doing a lot of different things. So now he's feeling really comfortable in this system. And it's gonna be fun. Let's see how the other quarterbacks respond. Gold has taken the lead, 31-26. Melky Stovall obliterated late. Yes, first down yardage out to the 29. Um, as far as I'm telling you, that we had Klein in at quarterback. He sticks it on the ground. Billy McCrary's had a nice game. Again, a converted safety high school quarterback. Now playing in the offensive backfield. Sophomore from Austin, Texas. Klein swings it out his way. They've got the first down at the 40 out near midfield before he's chased out of bounds by Antoine Albert. I think he's going to play this fall, man. I know Kalfani Muhammad, he's the speedster he's running track right now. He obviously is going to have a major role here, but this young man has earned the right to put the ball in his hands this fall. Over 100 yards on the ground, two grabs, 25 yards in the air. Gifted player with the ball in his hands, and that's exactly who he was in high school. Quick hitter, Jack Austin. Oh. Ran into Albert again. Some traction for this blue offense looking to answer the score from the goal. The cornerback position is going to be huge for this Cal defense. You can't just play cover two and protect your corners in the Pac-12 conference. They don't want to play that. They want to bring aggressive pressures. They want to put seven guys in the box at times, at eight, and they want to put man-to-man -man coverage guys on an island. So they're going to have to hold up. And I think when you look at the secondary, Greg Burns coaching the safeties, John Lovett coaching the corners, they've continued to develop guys to be able to make plays when the ball is there. They've usually been in the right spot when you watch the film over the last years, but it's just about making the play when the ball is about to get to the wide receiver. That's where they've grown, and I think the five true freshmen is where they will truly evolve. Patrick Worstel picked up the first down. Klein with tons of time, and he's got a man. Over the shoulder, Melky Stovall. In his first spring game, brings it in for a 39-yard touch. You know, we kind of seen 
kind of seen maturity throughout the day, haven't we? I mean, they've scrimmaged a lot, but you watched Stovall early on. He had a drop, was okay. You see him really getting comfortable later on in the drive. You saw Grayson Bankin, another mid-year freshman, a drop early, making some plays. We've seen these players mature before our eyes here in the spring scrimmage. Lou takes the lead, looking to make it a field goal advantage. Klein pulls it out. Now he's feeling the heat. And before the defensive line can get to him, Joe Castagnani. He's whistled dead on the touch. How about Zach Klein, though? 15 to 17, over 200 yards. Think he's excited to play some football, man? How great is ball, JB? We know he's got the cannon. Here's a little touch over the shoulder to the early enrollee freshman. 39 yards on the scoring hookup. Zach Klein firing up his blue side there in front, 32-31 here at the Cal Spring Football Scrimmage with Yogi Roth, J.B. Long, our producer Jason Cardona, our director Mark Wolfson, and sideline reporter Ashley Adamson with a special guest.